I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk theoretically of SharePoint Designer and its history, its drawbacks, and its features. So what is SharePoint Designer? Well, it's a tool to customize SharePoint. It's a downloadable desktop application that you install on your Windows computer that allows you to do quite a few things in SharePoint. So let's start from the beginning. SharePoint Designer comes from FrontPage. FrontPage was Microsoft's first foray into the task of building web designer tools. It was a what you see is what you get tool for building websites. It had a rather bad reputation in terms of the HTML it created. Many website developers thought it created a really, really bad HTML. So that product was canceled after a few years and it was um, turned into SharePoint Designer, among other things. So that tool started to be used primarily for building SharePoint sites and customizing SharePoint. The 2010 version of SharePoint Designer it was the most feature-rich one. It had a lot of nice things, such as conditional formatting, that is now gone with SharePoint Designer. You can, in some instances, still work with SharePoint Designer 2010 against the SharePoint 2013 or to even 2016 or SharePoint Online site, but it's not recommended and it's somewhat of a hack. So uh, you usually need to uh, work on the same version of SharePoint Designer as you have SharePoint. However, SharePoint Designer 2016, there's no such thing. It does not exist. Microsoft chose not to go forward with this. So when you start learning about SharePoint Designer, you should know that this is probably a dead end. Uh, and it's something that you need to relearn and whatever tasks you achieve with SharePoint Designer will have to be redone in a few years when this tool is you know, taken off the market. But so far it's there. So you might want to use it, but use it with that in mind. So a lot of companies argue internally if they're going to use SharePoint Designer or not. So in this slide, I'm not going to recommend anything. I see the benefits of not using it. I see the benefits of using it. But I do want to give you some information around it. Uh, so the dangers. Let's start with the bad points and then we'll get to the good points. SharePoint Designer has gotten the nickname SharePoint Destroyer. And that is regretfully rather true. You can destroy one single SharePoint site uh, with SharePoint Designer. It is rather easy to go in and make a hack, something that you usually do with SharePoint Designer. Go in and uh, edit the master page, for example, that will destroy your SharePoint site. So admins don't really like to have to restore particular sites. It's, uh, that's another story altogether. So they tend to not like SharePoint Designer at all. It's also rather hard to enforce standards because SharePoint Designer allows you to go beyond all the limits. You can get into a lot of the source code for SharePoint and modify things. SharePoint Designer is also rather badly documented. There are a lot of um, missing documentation there. I'm, of course, trying to do a bit of that in this series, but there's a lot missing. It doesn't allow you to follow any development standards. You can check in, check out code to something like TFS, a Team Foundation Server. It's hard to document what you're doing. It doesn't really have version tracking, things like that. It's really hard to work with as a professional developer using SharePoint Designer. And it seems to me that the conclusion from Microsoft is that this tool is too complex. It's intended for power users. And uh, it seems that Microsoft and most of the SharePoint community has concluded that they can't really handle it. They, they want something easier, something um, less error prone, something less difficult to work with. So that's why there's no SharePoint Designer 2016. And that's why there's nothing new happening in this front. So that's all the bad parts of SharePoint Designer. The good parts though, there are some things. It's the only tool so far for building workflows. You can do flows in the web browser. That's another story, I'll get to that in another demonstration. But if you wanna build workflows, it's 
almost the only tool. There are some web-based workflows, also the built-in ones, but you cannot customize those in any way. So if you want to do your own workflows, SharePoint Designer is the only tool. So if you decide, if your company decides that, no, we're not doing SharePoint Designer, then you can't have any workflows. Data connections is a rather powerful thing, especially if you're in-house and you have your own SharePoint server, you can do data connections really easy. Business data connectivity, you can also connect to data sources. That's really powerful if you are on-premise. If you are on Office 365, you can only connect to O data sources. So that's still powerful, but a bit more limited, of course. And there are a lot of no-code solutions that build on top of SharePoint Designer. So in summary, the big thing here is, of course, workflows. If you want to do workflows, then you need to have SharePoint Designer. That's the bottom line. All right, that's a quick run through of the background and theory of SharePoint Designer. Thank you for watching this demonstration.